Welcome to the GCN Tech Clinic, where we aim to answer your bike and tech-related questions. As ever, you can submit your questions down below in the comments section using the hashtag AskGCNTech, and we'll do our best to get through as many of them as possible. And if we don't answer your question, then uh, just keep persevering, keep firing it down. Hopefully, we'll get around to it. Without further ado, let's start this week. And we've got a question from Michael Loythaler who said, or Lloyd Haler, who says, Hi, Ollie and Alex. I'm searching for a fits like a glove saddle. Uh, the last saddle I tried was a Cello Italia SLR Boost Superflow. That's my, actually my favorite, um, which felt great, except for the fact that it felt like he was uh, sitting on the edge of the cutout. Is it possible that the cutout can be wide for some people? Absolutely, it can. Saddle choice is very personal. And that's one of the great things about Seller Italia is they do such a big range. So they do the, the, the SLR without a cutout and with a smaller cutout. So maybe that might suit you better, might be worth trying those. But one thing I would say is if you can go to a good bike shop where they have a range of saddles you can try, usually on, on a jig, that's a great way to do it. I mean, that ID match system is brilliant. And key takeaways when anyone asks me about, you know, finding a saddle that fits is, you can't usually find one saddle and then transfer it from bike to bike because the way you sit on different bikes is different. So if you're more upright, that distributes the pressure of your body onto the saddle differently and therefore it might not be comfortable on say a gravel bike unless you've set it up with the exact same geometry as your road bike or you know a mountain bike or whatever. Um, so factor that in and factor in that you're sitting on the saddle correctly. Some people try out a saddle but it's not positioned right. Maybe the fore and aft or the height of the saddle isn't right. And so then it's uncomfortable because they're sat just on the nose of it and they're not properly sat in it. That again makes a difference. And the final thing is that, I mean, look at a road bike saddle. It's never gonna be an armchair, is it? So sometimes it is a case of, you know, just getting, just getting on with it. And there are pro riders that have struggled their entire careers, but yeah, uh, you should be able to keep persevering. You should be able to find something that works for you. Uh, next question is from SQRTPI. Catchy. Uh, he said, is there any type of bike bag setup you'd recommend or avoid for touring on a full carbon road bike? Well, there's lots of great bike bags out there now. Uh, one key thing I always look for is on the rear bag that mounts onto your seat post, you want to try and get one that isn't a swingy one. Uh, some of them aren't as good and they swing like a pendulum off the back of the bike when loaded up. This can get really annoying on long rides. Whereas some of the better designs, um, if you search for reviews, there's, this is something that gets talked about. They actually stay nice and secure in a straight line. So look for that key feature. And the other thing about being on a full carbon bike is rather than the bags, I would either tape up areas of your frame or your handlebars where you're strapping the bags or they're making contact with the frame or maybe get some bike frame protectors. These are like clear sort of acetate stickers that you can get and stick on your bike. Invest in those because bike bags constantly rubbing against carbon frames rubs against the paint and can rub through the carbon if you're going on long rides. So that's, that's my top tip there. Uh, next question is from Massimo Serafini, who says, Hi Alex, um, and Ollie presumably. A few days ago you made a video about carbon fibre. On that note, I was wondering, with the advances in technology, would a low-end carbon fibre frame today be as good as a high-end carbon fiber frame from 10 years ago? Well, if you went back to the, the first carbon fiber frames, so things like the Look uh, TVT frame uh, from back in the day, which was, you know, the lugged carbon frame uh, with sort of aluminium lugs and carbon tubes. Yeah, the carbon fiber used there is pretty rubbish compared to the carbon you get in basic sort of entry-level carbon frames now. The technology has certainly moved on and it will continue to move on. If you look at carbon fiber strands under a really powerful microscope, they look really like rough and imperfect, kind of like wool. Um, whereas where the advancements are largely being made in the quality of the fiber is that those fibers are getting more and more perfect down to like the nano scale. And that's where, you know, if we can make carbon fiber using long carbon nanotubes, it will be amazing. But yeah, it's, it is always that trickle down tech so a, car, a basic carbon fiber frame now is better than a basic carbon fiber frame from 10 years ago. But still, 10 years ago, we had bikes like the Cervelo RCA, which was a phenomenal bike. And 
has not really been surpassed, but it was you know, far too expensive to mass produce, hence why it was never mass produced. Uh, next question is from po Podge Karek, who says, hi guys, uh, I'd like to ask a question about turbo trainer cassettes. He says his wife's bike has a 10 speed group set on it and his has an 11 speed. And so which is better to put on the turbo trainer? Is it better to put an 11 speed cassette on the turbo trainer or a 10 speed? I wouldn't mix and match. I, you, you can't run a 10 speed chain on an 11 speed cassette because it's too wide for the gauge. You can sort of get it to work the other way around. So you could have like an 11 speed chain running on a 10 speed cassette, but I wouldn't recommend it. It's gonna skip, it's gonna jump around, it's not gonna be smooth. Components are probably gonna wear quicker. Just avoid it if you can. Um, perhaps just have one, one bike set up for the turbo, get another turbo or upgrade your wife's bike to 11 speed. Uh, next question is from Naut van Dajic who says, uh, after cleaning his bike, he struggles to clean his bike cleaning tools. Well, yes, so you can, you know, paintbrush cleaner is, is a thing that you can use. It usually contains, um, you know, various sort of solvents and things that then will strip away dirt and grime from your things. Or just use a bit of your bike cleaner or your degreaser, use that on the brushes to clean them themselves after you've finished cleaning your bike. Um, and you do right, you know, taking care of your brushes, they will last longer. Last two questions this week are about upgrades and upgrading your bike. We've got one from Simon Fincher who says, you know, any tips about upgrading your bike? When should you change your components on an existing one? Or, you know, should you just buy a new bike? He's asking for a uh, casual cyclist interested in becoming a keener amateur. And Raphael uh, Cotona says, should I upgrade my current bike or buy a new one with better specs when he worked out the total expenses of doing both, he could buy a new one um, with the same specs uh, rather than just up for the price of upgrading. So this is a, this is a great question from, from both of you and it depends on your circumstances. The, the main thing I would try and work out is what is going to give you the better bike for the same amount of money spent and then go with that is, is probably the simplest way of doing it. Um, but Certain things to consider are, you know, what is the current state of your bike that you're upgrading? If it's totally worn out and a bit tired, then yeah, it might make sense to replace it. If you've got a really good frame, but maybe a lower end group set, it can be worth upgrading it because you don't need to upgrade everything at once. So you don't need to think of it as spending all of that money in one go. You can upgrade things in a more economically sensible way. So for example, in the past when I've had bikes, I've upgraded things like when they've worn out. So like if the chain and the cassette uh, wore out, then I would replace them going from like a Tiagra to maybe like a 105. You know, when my shifters eventually wore out, which took ages, then I switched them out to Ultegra ones because that makes a big difference and things like that. And that's a really good way to approach it. So yeah. It's, it's when, when bits wear out. Things like tires, are one, you know, I always say tires, the best upgrade you can make, but you know, wait till your tires are, are completely worn out and used before you, you change them is a sensible way to do it. So I hope that answers your question. And if you, you've got you know, questions, don't forget to fire them down below, ask GCN Tech hashtag, get it in. And I'm sorry if I haven't been able to answer your question this week, but it is a pleasure answering your questions. So keep persevering, keep getting down. Hopefully we'll get around to your question in another episode. Until then, I'll see you later. Bye.